Thank you for coming to the channel today. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to be doing a bit of a hack. So let's get started. Have you recently been sucked into the hype of the Archer and Olive September subscription box? I heard it was gorgeous, but the cost to get it to New Zealand was, let's just call it what it was, extortionist. It was around $200, so I needed an alternative, something free. I saw so many posts with people making pretty pressed flower spreads and I wanted to be cool too. So today I have three ways to press your own flowers for free at home to use in your bullet journal and a couple of easy tips on how to speed up drying and a comparison of techniques. I also know how challenging creating ideas and themes in your bullet journal can be. So I've linked my awesome free random bullet journal generator down below. It is such a great way to get unstuck from your usual planning mode and maybe give you a brand new suggestion. There are over 400 themes categorized by month, season, color. It's easy to use. I cannot wait to see how you create them and tag us so I can share it with our viewers in our next video. The first thing we're going to need to do is buy some flowers. I bought a selection of flowers so that I could get a really nice wide range of florals for my pressing. Okay, so I already pre you will have seen, I already pre-selected some flowers that I think are going to be perfect for pressing. So the first one I'm going to select here is this beautiful purple one. Isn't it just divine? And I think it's going to press really well because it's purple and green. The next one we're going to do are these guys because they are just so cute and I think they're going to sit really well. We've got this beautiful purple one over here. We've got some of these really cute little pink ones. These are really thick, um, like they're really thick, so I don't know if they will press too well, but you know what? Let's give them a try anyway. And now I have half a beautiful, um, <laughs> half a beautiful bouquet to sit on my table. So we're gonna get started with the first process. The first thing you're going to want to do is cut off the bottom so that we can make these as flat as possible. You can give them a little squish as we're going just to make sure that they set or settle really flat. We're going to use the same technique for all of the techniques we're going to try today. So make sure you have as many flowers as possible to give them all a go. What you're going to need is a book to put the flowers in, a super heavy weight. I'm using my weight that I haven't used for ever. And some heavy textbooks, uh, the Art of Sustainability Handbook and Developing Effective Safety Culture. I feel like those are going to work really well. We're also going to use some tissue paper and some absorbent paper. And we're going to choose some florals that are really delicate and flat and that we can really have a good display when we squish them together. Okay, now that we've got our little flowers together, we are going to put them aside and we're going to get our book and all the things that we're going to use to press it together with. Now, I've been told that the paper towels actually leave indentations on the flowers. So using my notebook here, I am going to just measure up the flowers and make sure that they fit in, pop down the absorbent uh, paper towels, and then pop in a little bit of tissue paper, which I hear makes them super nice and flat as well. So popping them all in, making sure we've got a beautiful set of shapes and styles and making sure we have enough space for them as well. Folding the paper over, putting another piece of absorbent paper towel on the top and then closing up the book, squishing them flat and then popping all of these heavy books on the top and my heavy um, weight on the top. 
Now you'll need to wait two weeks to four weeks for them to be fully dried and ready to go. 200 years later. Okay, granted it was three weeks, but here we go. A million years later, we are opening it up and you can see already the vibrancy of these is just absolutely stunning. They're a little bit tacky still, but that's okay. They're pretty dry and the colors have remained really beautiful. If we compare them though with the others, you can see the heat press is a lot drier and the colors are a lot more muted. And then if we compare those again to the laminated version, you can see the colors have stayed the same, but they are obviously in the laminated pouch. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a little circle. I'm going to keep this really simple. I want to stick my florals down in a circular shape and then just have that in the circle, not the whole flower in the circle. You can see every time I move that pink flower, some more petals fall off. So they are super delicate. I'm going to smush on the um, glue and then I'm going to make sure that they fit within that circle. I forgot that this pink one's got a lot of um, kind of like pollen and like little bits to it. Um, so I'm going to have to clear those out. But once I'm done, it creates a really cool spring effect. What do you think you would use pressed flowers for? I would love to hear your ideas in the comments below. Or even better, tag me on Instagram with your use of flowers and I can share them in my next video. All right, the second technique we're going to do is pressing flowers with an iron. Just using a home iron to apply heat to dry flowers is another option. I have to be honest and say that this is my least favorite approach because I don't believe the quality is on par with, say, the traditional methods. However, if you need flowers that vary and you need them fast and don't have access to any other options, this is a wonderful one to have in your little toolbox. And before I ironed the flowers, I sandwiched them between two pieces of parchment paper and arranged them where I wanted to be. This was helpful to have a good hard surface and a thin cloth underneath it. And I'll go into a little bit more details in a second. All right, so for the Cricut, um, for the ironing example, we're going to use the mat that Cricut has. And we're going to use my Cricut iron, which is a little bit bigger. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of press them for 15 to 30 seconds. We don't have to glide over it, which is really good. We can just put the heat down and leave it there for a couple of seconds. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in the Cricut um, kind of big press and we're going to heat it up to 100, 125 degrees Celsius. And once we've done that, we're going to get the little press ready. I'm going to put down a piece of uh, wood uh, or piece of board and I'm going to get some parchment paper as well as some um, absorbent paper towels. Once we have those, we're going to lay out our florals and we're going to make sure they're in a nice display. We're going to seal them in with another piece of paper towel and another parchment paper on the top so we don't burn anything. And then we're going to press and hold for 15 seconds. Now I found that it needed another 30 seconds at a bit of a higher temperature and you'll see that they are very delicate on the paper. So we want them to dry out a little bit more. Before I put them through the laminator though, I decided that I wanted them a little bit flatter as well. So put together some laminating um, flowers and just some really small ones and thought, okay, I'll give these a quick blast in the under the iron as well. You want to be very delicate when taking these off because they are so, so delicate and some of them are still a little bit gummy. So just go really slowly with all of them and when you have them all out and ready to go, you want to dry them for a little while longer. You can see there's quite a bit of discoloration on these. Right, the last process we're going to do is preserving your flowers for a little bit longer using a laminator. If you wanted to laminate the whole thing, I would choose flowers that are a little bit smaller with a little bit more delicate petals because that was the only way to really get them through the laminator machine. And when the flowers are more substantial, you have to remove the petals off a little bit because the flower laminates them all separately. So some of the petals did become discolored as a result of the heat from the laminator, but not to the extent that it rendered them totally unusable. Point of fact, I believe that a good number of them protect 
possessed a very attractive appearance. Let's get into the details of how I did that right now. I am using my absolutely massive laminator that I got and it's pretty straightforward to use. You put it on the heat, you pretty much plug it in and you use one of the little laminating pouches. The little pouch is going to go through. We're going to set up our beautiful flowers to be able to um, kind of go through. And all right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your flowers are um, arranged in a way that you can cut them out really easily once they have gone through the laminator. You want to make sure that they're super flat, so you can see that the ones that we've already pre-pressed are really lovely and flat. You want to put the closed side through first, and on mine it got a little bit stuck because it was a bit chunky, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, completely sealed down, which is fine, as long as we can cut them out and it seals them in. You can see it really retains the color beautifully, and those colors are really nice and vibrant. Okay, Ooh. how do you think you could use pressed flowers in your notebook? Struggling with your notebook is pretty common. It can feel overwhelming to come up with ideas. So head over to the blog, grab a couple of suggestions. I've got some suggestions in the blog below. And also while you're there, grab the five days to a better Bujo guide and you can kickstart your enthusiasm again. Now, right now, I'm gonna show you just a couple of ways that I've used the dried flowers in my notebook and in my Bujo. And I also wanted to show you a little bit of a comparison between the flowers. You'll see some are quite tacky and wet still, and some are ready to be used. Um, so let's get started with that and I'll see if I can find some other inspiration online to show you and let's get started. Here's some gorgeous inspiration that I found on the gram. I've linked them all below. Ah, as you can see, some of these were so tacky and so wet. So some of these, some of the processes didn't work. That's okay. I could have dried them for longer. I could have done a variety of different things. It doesn't mean that it's not achievable free. And what I ended up doing was just buying a sticker book with dried flowers in. Because you know what? It's easy. I don't have any mess or fuss. I just stick my sticker in and it's flat as a pancake. You don't have to worry about the colors. Someone else has already done that for Okay, so here's my quick bullet journal plan with me with some already pre prepared flower stickers. Um, it makes it super easy to do. I selected some stickers I thought would look adorable and using my Ink by Genji stencil I'm measuring out some squares so that I can have vertical um, weekly spread. This is really simple weekly spread. Pretty much anyone can do this. I, it's not rocket science to be able to kind of achieve this um, kind of creativity. It's, it's just a really small way of adding creativity to your bullet journal um, and making it really simple. All right, so getting back to it, we're choosing the right kind of, I thought maybe I could add a couple extra things, but then I thought, you know what, keeping it simpler is better. Um, I like to see where my dots are, so that's why I hold my ruler a little bit differently. And then I'm going to put in the bottoms with just a little bit of a border. I'm then going to hand letter in the days of the week, keeping it super duper easy and simple again. Um, and again, just adding a couple of borders. I'm going to then stick in my cute little stickers. Oh, I forgot first. I was actually going to add watercolor first. That was a fail on my part. Added a bit of watercolor. Don't use a lot of water when adding watercolor to your journal. You want to use as little as possible. So it does feel a little bit scratchy and dry when you're doing it, but it does have a really nice effect afterwards. And then sticking in my pressed flower stickers. Really, I can't tell the difference except when it's on the watercolor because it's got the outline, which is pretty cute. Um, and then adding a couple more because I thought I needed some blue in there too. Once I'm done with that, I realize that actually I want some more borders around the days of the week that I'm using. So I added just a couple of extra borders. I didn't put them everywhere. I just put them in kind of key spots or spots I thought would be um, kind of good to have the borders in. Use my eraser to erase all the additional lines and we are essentially 
good to go. Going to add in some days of the well, kind of activities for the days of the week. Um, add in the dates, and that's my week done and dusted. This actually, while it's sped up, actually only took me probably. 10 minutes to finish really easy to do and anyone can make their journal really creative just through this simple process the other option is is there are tons of flower suppliers or dried flower suppliers online and you can easily go online and i'll drop some links below as well easily go online and purchase some pre-dried flowers that you can then use in your notebook easy peasy lemon squeezy so thank you for joining me today and it has been a hoot it's been hot because i use so much heat with the this no 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 laughing no laughing okay i'll just laugh at myself now if you like spending time with me today i would love to hang out with you more so really i just want you to see my face all the time no, seriously, though, it would be great to be able to have you as part of my community. So please hit the subscribe button so you can see more of this face and more of the videos that I create because I create them for you. So if you've got some suggestions on videos that you would like to see going forward, please let me know and I will try my hardest to get those out to you. Thank you.